the future. In fact, if you look at our uh, our launch rate on, on our manifest on our website, it's growing very rapidly, um, and uh, and we need to make sure we can launch all of those vehicles um, and do so, um, you know, in, in the right way. Um, and uh, and so I think so. So we look all around the country to see uh, what what might make the the, the best uh, commercial orbital launch site. Um, we actually looked at several places in Texas, um, um, and uh, you know one of the one of the biggest factors, uh, maybe the biggest, I think, is is the was the, the willingness of the state and local governments uh, to 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 support such an endeavor. Do they? In other words, do they do they truly really want it? Because um, you know we we want to be a place where we're, where we're truly wanted. Um, and we actually began in, in environmental studies on a few different locations. Um, but the, I think the, the fundamental point that, that swayed uh, SpaceX uh, for uh, Boca Chica was the tremendous outpouring of support from local residents. Mr. Musk, you said that the future vision would be Mars. Yeah. And did you yourself see getting aboard one of your rockets or taking one of those missions? Um, yeah, I'd like to take. I'd like to fly to Mars. Um, I mean, but I think the important thing is that is to develop a technology that will uh, enable uh, ultimately anyone to move to Mars if they if they really want to. Um, so that if somebody works really hard and saves up, that that they could move to Mars. That would be um, very expensive. It would be in conjunction with governments, or it would be the ultimate space tourism. How do you see that developing in a half generation? Yeah, I think um, I, I think it's very likely to be a joint uh, government commercial uh, endeavor. Um, and uh, in fact, I mean, as it is, NASA is kind of laying some of the very early exploratory groundwork for Mars, you know, with the rovers and the recent Maven a spacecraft that went into orbit around Mars. So that that sort of very early precursor stuff um, is, is actually quite helpful. And then. Um, yeah, and, and, but I think it's the, 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 the critical thing, though, is, is not to. Um, it's actually not not so much about tourism, uh, you know, which is I mean, I'm playing against tourism because like you know, people think it's great, um, but. Uh, but, but the thing that's going to fundamentally affect humanity's future is are we a multi-planet species or are we a single-planet species? Um, and a single-planet species is much more vulnerable than a multi-planet species because if some calamity were to happen to one planet, it could destroy civilization, maybe bring an end to humanity. Um, now, I should say I'm quite optimistic about, I mean, I'm optimist by nature, obviously. <laughs> Otherwise, wouldn't have gotten the rocket business otherwise. <laughs> I know, extra optimism required for that. Um, so, um, but, so I'm, I, you know, I'm positive about the, the, the future of Earth. I mean, there's certain important things we need to, to, to do this century. I think we, we also need to work hard to minimize our uh, the carbon emissions, that, that, you know, in the oceans and atmosphere. Uh, not, not bring it to zero, but just just think of it like it's a bank account. We're using up a bank account, and at a certain point, we, we won't be able to put any more carbon to the atmosphere without causing something really bad to happen. So, you wanted the NASA contract. Are you working in conjunction? Other governments, other space agencies that express interest in contracting with the United States. For example, the Japanese or the Europeans that are space agencies. How does this like to be personal? Uh, space, you know, compared to say Tesla and Solar City. Um, well, um, I think the. That, that they're, they're all really important. In terms of my day-to-day -day time, it's currently split about half and half between uh, Tesla and SpaceX. Um, and in, in most of my time at both companies is actually spent on engineering and design. So um, I think like people will obviously often see my name in the news and think, well, I must be just like doing a constant media campaign. Uh, but this is not the case. <laughs> Uh, sometimes just like some random tweet that I did, and it's like, you know, gets it's tons of attention. But, uh, this feels great. This uh, it feels like the future. You know, it feels like um, we're making real progress towards a future where uh, where humanity is a space-faring civilization, um, and and ultimately, um, you, you, in order for that to occur, they have to be hundreds of rock, rock, uh, orbital rocket launches per year, maybe thousands. Um, because if you think of how many launches are needed to ultimately establish a base on on Mars, it's a lot of launches. Um, particularly if you want to make it a self-sustaining base, um, 
you know, where the key threshold is. If the, if the spaceship, resupply spaceships from Earth stop coming, the, the Mars city would still be able to, wouldn't die out. That's like the key threshold that I think we want to try to reach. Um, and that, that's going to, yeah, require a lot of launches and, um, and, 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 and as we look ahead to the future, that's, that's one of the things that we thought was very important to establish an additional uh, a launch site and one that was optimized for uh, primarily for commercial activity. Um, and this is, this is not in any way a knock on Cape Canaveral, Cape Kennedy. That, 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 that's a great spaceport that they've got there. But we can have a much better understanding of that. But my rough understanding uh, is that we're going to do some joint research with the University of Texas on this site. So there's going to be some space-related activity with UT students uh, and professors. Uh, I think uh, I think if not permanently, semi-permanently associated right right near the launch site. They're creating something called the Stargate. That's correct. So yeah. Um, yeah, the, student, the students will be working on a, on a whole series of projects. It, not, uh, like not everything we do is Mars. I mean, in fact, most of what we do is launch satellites, resupply the space station, and in a few years we'll be, we'll be transporting uh, astronauts. But, um, but as we are able to establish a solid revenue base from commercial and government launches, uh, that, that, that enables us to um, start work on, on Mars-related activities. So, yeah. How, how much time do you have? I will see like five minutes more. We've been operating now. It's been, uh, man, we, we got that place in like 2000, late 2002. So it's been 12. We've been in, in Texas for 12 years um, with significant operations. So this is, in, in a lot of ways, an extension of our uh, Texas operations. Um, and uh, because we're aiming for reusability, uh, reusability uh, is important for um, for really uh, having a dramatically huge effect on the cost of space flight. And when the rockets come back to the launch site, uh, we would expect to, to uh, re refurbish and upgrade the rocket, that, that rocket technology for future flights. So we expect to have a, a fairly significant uh, engineering R&D uh, presence at the site. Um, and then you know, some of our larger rockets in the future are so big, they, they, they're not going by road. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, that would be the wise move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can you tell me about environmental studies and things like that? I know there's a lot of people here that want to 